As you've worked with SketchUp, you may have noticed something we call sticky geometry. Basically, when you move one piece of geometry over another, they tend to stick together. This behavior is key to the way SketchUp works, but sometimes it is just not what you need. The way to keep this from happening is to group geometry together as a unique entity. In SketchUp, there are two ways to group geometry, as a group or as a component. In many ways, the two look very similar. So let's take a moment and examine the differences. We'll start by selecting this geometry. Right or context click on it and select Make Group. Now all that geometry moves and behaves as one entity. Now do the same for the component geometry. Select it, then right or context click and choose Make Component. Don't worry about the options in the dialog box for now. We'll cover those later. At first, the group and the component seem the same, showing a larger bounding box indicating that this is a unique entity that acts as such. The primary difference comes when you make one or several copies of the object. Watch what happens as we edit and make changes to the group. You can see that we can manipulate each group separately. They have no connection to the original or to other groups. However, as we edit and change the component, all of the components change as well. You see, components are instanced, which means they are all linked to each other, and anything you do while editing a component will be repeated to the other components. As a rule, anything in your model that is repeated, even once, should be made into a component first. When you create a component, you cannot push-pull, move edges, or otherwise manipulate the geometry inside the component. You can only move, rotate, or scale the geometry as a whole. To change geometry inside the component, you must edit the component. Right or context click on the component, choose Edit Component, and you can then make changes as needed. Right or context click outside the component and choose Close Component when finished. Another way to open and close components for editing is with the Select tool. Double click on the component with the Select tool to start editing. Then click once outside the component with the Select tool to close. You can see when you're editing a component by observing the bounding box. It is solid and highlighted when the component is picked, but becomes a dotted bounding box when you are editing. Any components that you create are stored in the component library. Access this library through the window menu. When you open the component library, you can see other components we've created for your use. To see components you've created or added to the model, click this house icon. Right now, this shows our one component. Look through some of the categories to find other components to add to the model. Simply click on a component, then click in the model space to place it in the scene. Additionally, if you're connected to the internet, you can search here in the component browser for models in the 3D warehouse. Look through your results and simply select one to download it and place it in your scene. After adding a few components, click on the house icon to see all the components that have been added to the model. This remembers all components added to the model, even if you've deleted them from your scene. If you wish to also delete them from the component browser in model list, you can right click on a component icon and choose delete. This will delete any instances in your model that remain as well. A quick way to delete multiple components from the in model view that have been deleted from your scene is to click this flyout menu and choose purge unused. 
Let's erase one of the components we added to our scene. It's still available in the component browser. However, when we purge unused, it's deleted from the menu. Components are far more powerful than we've explored here. Look into some of our other documentation for tips and ways to use components.